these people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads, and hoping to beat the might of the Eggheads today are the Cross-In Quizzers. Now this team of friends quiz every Thursday at the Penrugal at Arms, which is situated in the Welsh village of Cross-In. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Denise, I'm 66 and I'm a retired teacher. Hi, my name's Andrew, I'm 48 and I work in IT. Hi, I'm Elaine, I'm 62 and I'm a retired hairdresser. Hi, I'm Peter, I'm 70 years old and I'm a retired quantity surveyor. Hello, I'm Matthew, I'm 56, I'm a PhD student. So Denise and team, welcome, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. And you, your quiz is a, a, a pretty seriously fought and contested thing, I gather. Uh, it is. It's quite unusual because we uh, put everybody's name in a hat and we draw pairs out and we take it in turns to be quiz master as well. So there's a lot of heckling. We're just <laughs> a great big group of friends. I and mean, quizzing is just a very British thing, isn't it? People seem to love it. Very much now, yes. It's, it's grown since Criss Cross Quiz. Why, kids, why are we such quizzers in this country, do you think? Judith, why do you think we're such quizzers? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we're competitive or something. Yeah, well, there speaks our million-pound woman, I of know. course. <laughs> yeah. So good luck to you in this Thank quiz. You. Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, cross in quizzes. The challengers won the last game, which at least proves it can be done. And it means a thousand pounds says you can't beat the eggheads today. Would you like to try? We mm -hmm. would. I thought so. The first head to head battle is on the subject of film and television. Now, who would like this? Who did we have we decide? I think it was going to be Elaine, wasn't it? Yeah. I think so, yeah. 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 You're right with that, Elaine. Elaine, yeah. Yeah. okay, film and TV. Against which egg at any one of them? All looking pretty keen today, unusually. Judas. Oh, Are we not saying no. Judas for sport? Chris. I think <laughs> would rather not do sport. Chris. <laughs> Chris. Chris, Chris. Right, we're, we'd like Chris, please. Oh dear, I heard a conversation there, Judith, which... What did they say? Nothing, nothing. Was it rude? <laughs> no, no, it was related to strategy at any future round that we oh. will not discuss. Oh, right, I see. It's not going to be you in this round, it's going to be Chris. Yes. Mm. Film and TV against Elaine. So, Elaine from Cross in Quizzes, Chris from the Eggheads. Please, to ensure there's no conferring, take your positions in our question room. Elaine, I gather you're a retired hairdresser who used to do show jumping. I did a lonely local ju jumping, um, a riding club, and I've been retired now about six or seven years. Do you miss the hairdressing? No. <laughs> no. So we're on film and TV. Oh, uh, yes. And uh, Elaine, would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. Here we are. In which 1970s TV show would the police often be seen driving a Ford Granada? Is that the Sweeney, Starsky and Hutch, or Hawaii Five-O? Um, I don't think it was Hawaii Five-O, and I'm sure it's not Starsky and Hutch. I think it's the Sweeney. The Sweeney is the right answer. <laughs> Off the block. The Starsky and Hutch, their car was famous, but I thought it was a Cortina. Ford Torino, Torino, wasn't it? Oh, it was a Ford as well? Yeah, Ford Torino. Ford Torino? Yeah. As in the Clint Eastwood, um, hmm. what's yeah. that movie with? Grand Torino. Grand Torino. Grand Torino. Okay, Chris, which of these is a 2014 film starring Aaron Eckhart and Bill Nye? Is it I, Frankenstein, You, Dracula, or We, Werewolf? Well, We, Werewolf would be grammatically incorrect. It would be We, Werewolves. I can't see why they'd call a film You, Dracula, so it's got to be I, Frankenstein. I, Frankenstein is correct. They may get harder. Let's see. Elaine, Alex Murphy is the human name of which screen character? Wolverine, Iron Man, or Robocop? No, I'm not sure on this one. Um, I don't think it's Iron Man, but I'm, I'm guessing on all of these. Um, I'm sure it's not Wolverine. I, I, I go for it, Robocop. Yeah, Robocop is the right answer. Come on. Yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, the cross in quizzes are happy with that. Okay, Chris. Chris Cross. In Friends, who played Pete Becker, the extremely rich suitor of Monica? Is it Paul Rudd, Jean Favreau, or Tom Selleck? Now, I never ever watched Friends. First two names don't mean anything, but I know Tom Selleck was in a few episodes of Friends, so I have to say Tom Selleck. He was, was he? Mm -hmm. Anyone, any Friends experts here? Not an expert, but I would have gone. Because Paul Rudd was the one with Lisa uh, Kudrow, Phoebe's character. And I thought Tom Selleck's was uh, Richard. So, based on the question, I'd have gone John Favreau. Well, that, that's that would be my answer. Yeah, John Favreau is the right answer, though, Chris. So, yeah, you are now yeah. looking vulnerable to being knocked out. If you get this one right, Elaine, you're in the final round. In the TV comedy series, what is the name of Mr. Bean's girlfriend? Is she Irma Gobb, Alma Trap, or Vera Mug? Oh, this is another one I don't know. Um, I'll go for Alma Trap. Irma Gobb is the right answer, I'm afraid. Oh. You've got two out of three. Chris needs this one to pull himself back into it. The playwright Kwame Kweama found fame playing Finley Newton in which BBC drama? Chris, was it Tutti Frutti? Casualty or Howard's Way? Well, he's obviously an African character, and there weren't any African characters in Howard's Way, which is about shipbuilding in the Solent. Uh, Tutti Frutti was a Glasgow-based thing about a, a failing rock band. So, he would have played, I think, a senior doctor or consultant in Casualty. I don't know about the part, but it was Casualty. You're mm. right, Chris. Well yeah. done. So. That's two points each to you after three questions. Sorry you couldn't knock him out quite as simply as you wanted to, Elaine. We go to sudden death now, okay? Gets a bit harder, I don't give you alternatives. In which 2000 film does George Clooney play an escaped prisoner named Ulysses Everett McGill? Oh, sorry, there are aren't you. Uh, oh, there are. Well, but there you are, there aren't you, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't mm, get it. Team? No, no, no. <laughs> go on. Oh, brother, where art thou? Oh, brother, where art thou? Oh, you were close, you were getting there, Elaine, I'm sorry, I had, we had the time to, to yeah. wait for you to get there, but not to be. Sudden death, Chris, your question mm. for the round. Which 1971 film features a naked Michael Caine holding a shotgun? Oh, that is the absolute classic. Get Carter. Get Carter is the right answer. Well done, Chris. You've taken her out on Sunday. And some very sporting applause on this side. Elaine, you've been knocked out. I'm sorry, but it's early days. Plenty of time for your team to come back. Please return to us here. Now, I mentioned the playwright Kwame Kweama. And he was in Casualty. A se was it Senior Doctor, you said, Chris? Senior or? Doctor. Oh, I'm sort of visualised this Senior Doctor consultant type. Was he a... A male nurse or whatever? I think he was a paramedic. Paramedic. I think so. But what's interesting about him is he was, he was christened mm. Ian Roberts, born oh, Ian Roberts in the UK, discovered his, or looked into his background in Ghana, yeah. went over there, decided to, to, mm. to use his African name, uh -huh. or uh, take an African name from his, his uh, forebears. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? So, as it stands, the cross-in quizzers have lost a brain, but no panic. There's no panic yet, is there? No, no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we can have a panic later. It's plenty of time. <laughs> the next subject is science. Who would like science? Uh, yeah. Andrew is our Andrew. science Andrew. expert. Okay. That's me, Jeremy. Andrew against which egghead obviously can't be Chris? Tremendous knowledge, Dave, Dave Denise. We want to go for Dave. We'll go for Dave. Okay, Please. so Andrew from the Cross in Quizzes versus Tremendous Knowledge, Dave, on science from the eggheads. Please, both of you, go to our question room now. So, Andrew, you were chosen as the science man? Yes. Because you, you work in science in some way? Um, I've got a technical background, and I suppose it's a, an area that's been of interest to me. Science, Andrew, first or second? I'll go first, please, gentlemen. Here's your first question. Alterations in global weather patterns are commonly referred to by what name? Is it element shift, climate change, or atmosphere flux? It's not atmosphere flux. And I don't think it's element shift, so I'll go for climate change, Jeremy. It is climate change, Andrew. Well done. 
All right, we're on science. And Dave, your question. What do female bumblebees possess that males or drones do not? Wings, antennae, or a sting? I think it's a sting. Sting is the right answer. <laughs> Andrew, which of these is used to refer to a large depression or funnel-shaped cavity in the earth caused by natural processes of erosion? Is that a wormhole, sinkhole, or bolt hole? Right, I think a wormhole is uh, something in uh, Star Trek that you travel through to another part of the universe. A uh, bolt hole is uh, somewhere you go to hide away. So I think the answer is a sinkhole. Sinkhole is the right answer. Okay, Dave, your question. What name is given to the mixture of ash, rock and gases that travel down the side of a volcano during an eruption? Is that the pyroclastic flow, the hydrothermal spill, or the fumarolic wave? Not heard of this at all. I'm going to have to go down a sinkhole myself, or get by the bolt hole after this answer. Um, probably hydrothermal spill, but I'll have to go pyroclastic flow, because I've not heard of this phrase at all. Yeah, pyroclastic flow is the right answer. Yeah, I've just, I've just not heard of the phrase. No, sure, well, well, well played. Who, who can tell us about pyro, the word pyroclastic? What does that mean? Something with fire and... Well, pyro must be fire. Must plastic be. is mm. breaking, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Because it's a, it's a mixture of all the different elements that go into a volcanic eruption all flowing down the side. All right, two points each. Back to you, Andrew. The Austrian-born scientist, Lisa Meitner, was instrumental in which discovery? Was it TB vaccine, nuclear fission, or DNA? Right, I don't, this is gonna be through a process of elimination. I don't think it was DNA. That was uh, Watson and Crick, I believe. I don't think it was nuclear fusion. I think I would have heard the name. I am going to say the TB vaccine. No, it's actually nuclear fission. So, you have two points. Let's see if Dave can take the round. The primate with the scientific name Pongo Pygmaeus is native to which of these islands? Is that Madagascar, Borneo or Luzon? I'm going to rule out Luzon. It's either Borneo or Madagascar. Right. Probably a big mistake. I'm going to go Madagascar. No, you're wrong. It's a type of orangutan that's from Borneo. Okay. So you're right to rule out Luzon, but Madagascar is the wrong answer. Okay, you're, you're locked in challenge here. Sudden death we go to again. Andrew, your question. What word is used to describe the distance between the rails on a railway track and can be referred to as a narrow, standard or broad? That is a uh, gauge, Jeremy. Gauge right up your street, yes. Okay, science question for you, Dave. Sudden death. In deep sea diving, what is the most commonly used noble gas often used when commercial divers are breathing a mixture of gases that doesn't include nitrogen? Right, let me just get hold of this. Um, I'll, I'll try helium, but I've got no, no idea, really. No, that's the right answer, Dave. Helium is correct. <laughs> helium, I, ju I just don't. Uh, I'm having an absolute brain freeze here. No, you're not. You're doing well. You're doing well. <laughs> Commercial deep sea divers often breathe something called heliox, which is basically 80% helium, 20% oxygen. No nitrogen. Okay. Sudden death. Here we are. Andrew, your question. Scotoma is a condition that affects which of the senses? I'm going to say, because of its similarity to skin, I'm going to say touch. No, it affects the vision. Dave, your question for the round. Which planet in our solar system has a moon named Belinda? Belinda. Belinda, B-E-L-I-N-D-A. I have to go against all logic and go Uranus. Uranus is the right answer, Dave. Well done, you've taken the round. You're in the final. Andrew, sorry about that. You've been knocked out by our eggheads. Please, both of you, come back and rejoin your teams. So, the cross in quizzes have now lost two brains. Any thoughts, Denise? Very difficult subjects. Very. Very difficult questions, I mean. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's, yeah. You'll, they'll be in the pub watching this, won't they? They will. They <laughs> will. <laughs> and so say, let's drink out of it anyway. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> let's turn it around now. Next subject for you is arts and books. Do you want me to Is this good? Yeah. 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 I'll take that. Denise on arts and books against which egghead can't be Chris or Dave? 
I'll, I'll go for Pat. Please. All right. So Thank you. Please from the Cross in Quizzes versus Pat from the Air Kids on Arts and Books. Please go to the question room. So, Denise, it's, it's your moment as the skipper to turn it around. Fingers crossed. So, Denise, it's Arts and Books. Would you like to go first or second? I think I'll go first. OK, here we go. Good luck to you. La Gioconda, an alternative title for the Mona Lisa, literally translates as what? Is it the frowning one, the crying one, or the merry one? It's not one I really know. Um... La Gioconda. Conda. G-I-O-C-O-N-D-A, Gioconda. Well, she does have a slight smile, so I'll go for the merry one. Pat, is she right? I think she is. Yes, you're right. Well done. <laughs> oh, really, she's not, she's not the merriest. I think if you're guessing, you'd probably guess frowning, so you did well there. Here you go, Pat. Which Spanish art museum was open to display an important part of the Spanish royal family's collections? Is it the Borghese Gallery, the Bilbao Guggenheim, or the Prado? Well, the Borghese, I think, is in Rome. So it's between the Bilbao Guggenheim and Prado. Bilbao Guggenheim, I think, is uh, very much centred on modern art, and the Prado is full of great old master paintings. So if it's the collection of the royal family of Spain, then I think we're looking at the Prado. Prado is the right answer. Back to you. Denise, according to a quote in the Shakespeare play Julius Caesar, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in what? Ourselves? Myself or others? Uh, I think that's ourselves. Ourselves is quite right. Well done. <laughs> Fault lies not in our stars, but in ourselves. What a great line. Okay, Pat. In which country was the crime writer Mo Hader born? Was that the United Kingdom, Canada, or New Zealand? Oh, dear, dear, dear. Mo Hader. I've heard heard of the author, but uh, I don't think I know anything concrete. I don't think, I, yeah, I'm in the dark here. I have a suspicion the answer may be UK, but this could go wrong. United Kingdom. United Kingdom is right. So you've got two each. The knees back to you for your third question. Try and get this right, put some pressure on him. Which author created the fictional detectives Charlie Peace and Perry Trethowan? Is that Robert Barnett? Val McDermott or Reginald Hill? I have no idea. Um, I've never heard of any of those authors either. Um, well, it's got to be an absolute guess. Trithowan sounds West Country, but that doesn't have any bearing on the names of the authors anyway. Um, I'll go Reginald Hill. Any eggheads know this? No, but I'd have, I'd have... I didn't think it was either Val McDermott or Reginald Hill, so I'd have gone Robert Barnard. But... Robert Barnard is the answer. Yeah. So Pat has a chance to take the round. Pat, your question. The Hawk in the Rain, published in 1957, was which writer's first book of poetry? Is it Stephen Spender, Marianne Moore, or Ted Hughes? I think this collection focused on nature and the outdoors and uh, they were central concerns of Ted Hughes. Ted Hughes is correct. It's his poetry and it's your round, Pat. Well done, you're in the final. Denise, sorry, you've been knocked out. Thank you. Both of you rejoin your teams. We'll see what happens next. So, tricky times for the crossing quizzes because you've now lost three brains from the final round. The Eckheads haven't lost any. Bear in mind, they lost the last game, though, so they, they've got a lot to prove here. <laughs> the, next subject, <laughs> the next subject is politics for you, oh, so who wants this? Oh, that's Joy, yeah. That's going to oh, no, be no, Pete. No, I'll have to know. I'll have to. Peter? Yeah? Yeah, I'll have to do that. And against which Egghead, Peter? Oh, the Egghead. Um, Judith, Judith, please. Okay, so it is Peter versus Judith from the Eggheads on Politics. Please go to the question room now. Okay, both, we are on politics. And Judith, we've been looking at your scores on politics. Rather oh, well, good. Oh, dear. No, you've just done it now. No, I haven't done it yet. It would... Do you want to know? 
No, no, I really don't, because it always, you always jinx it. No, no, always. no, no. Let, let me just, sure. just just say, which is that of the last 27 politics rounds, you've won 25. So you're virtually unbeatable. I can't imagine you losing. No, can't go. Peter, do you want to go first? Kevin. Can we go to Kevin? Do you want to go first or second? I can't imagine her losing either, but I'll go second just for a change. Here's your first question, Judith. Norman Tebbit was a member of Parliament for which political party? Is that Conservative, Liberal Democrat or Labour? <laughs> well, I think he was a Conservative. Conservative is right. Well done on that, Judith. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew, knew that. Okay, Peter. In 2013, it was announced that from October 2014, UK drivers will no longer have to display what on their vehicles? Tax disc, number plates, or brake lights? I think that's tax disc. Tax disc is right. Well done, Peter. They're clapping you here. Judith, your second question. Who chaired the Royal Commission examining reform of the House of Lords in 1999? Was that Lord Hutton? Lord Wakeham or Lord Leveson? Oh, well, now, who was it? Hutton is Iraq, isn't he? Um, Leveson was um, it, well, the press, or oh, hacking, phone hacking, all that kind of stuff. So it must be Lord Wakeham. It is Lord Wakeham. Well done. Back to you, Peter. Your second question. In 2013, which politician was referred to as boring snoring in a Twitter era by the editor of the TV program Newsnight. Is that Harriet Harman, Rachel Reeves, or Theresa May? Boring snoring. Not sure that sort of applies to any of them, really. Um, I'll go with Rachel Reeves on the count that I've never heard of her before. <laughs> well, you're right as well. Oh, it was Rachel Reeves. Interesting little in-house incident, that. Okay, Judith, what was the approximate turnout of UK voters in the 2010 general election? Was it 65%, 55% or 45%? Um, it's going down all the time, isn't it? Um, I, I think it's 55%. It's the obvious one, but it's the wrong one. It's actually higher. It's higher. 65, yeah. I'm amazed. I thought it was going down. I think I think 2010 was a particularly big election. Oh. All right, Peter, you have a chance to take the round. Hun Sen first became prime minister of which Asian country in 1985? Was it Laos, Vietnam, or Cambodia? And Hun Sen is two words, H-U-N and then S-E-N. Uh, not one I've ever heard of. Uh... Obviously, 1985 is a fair time. I think I'll go with Cambodia. If you've got this right, you've taken the round and knocked Judith out. Very unlikely you'll beat her because she's almost flawless in politics. Hardly lost any, Judith, have you? Not until now, because you jinxed it. <laughs> Do you know the answer? No, I don't. It's do. Cambodia. Yeah. <laughs> you are so, a I am so sorry. You, I you always do it. <laughs> I did. I just didn't Every know that time. was going to happen. I didn't know. I know, but if you haven't said it, it might. I'm so sorry. I, honestly, I will think before I do that again. I will. I will think before I do give you the big build up again. Anyway, well done, Peter. That's the main thing. You're in the final. It's not going to be a lonely operation for our last player here on this side. And if you both return to us, we will play that final round. So this is what we have been playing towards. It is time for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So that is Denise, Andrew and Elaine from the Cross in Quizzes. And also Judith from the Eggheads. Would you please now leave the studio? Peter and Matthew, you are playing to win the Cross in Quizzes a thousand pounds. Pat, Dave, Chris and Kevin, you're playing for something that money cannot buy, the Eggheads reputation. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time the questions are all general knowledge. You can confer. So, Peter and Matthew, the question is, are you able with your two brains to take out these four? And would you like to go first or second? We'll go second, please. 
Okay, so first question to the eggheads in our final. What name is given to the tones broadcast on BBC Radio as an hourly signal? Are they the yelps, the pips, or the squeaks? The pips. I think they're the pips. Yes. Yeah, the pips. Yeah. yeah, those are the time pips. The pips is right. Over to you, Peter and Matthew. Which of these is a common term describing a business that has recently begun operating? Crank up, pull up, or start up? Start up. <laughs> start up, Jeremy. Start up is right. One point each. Back to our eggheads. Which footballer did Manchester United sign for a reported club record of £37.1 million in January 2014? Is that Juan Mata, Colo Torre, or Samuel Eto? One matter, I think. Yeah, one matter. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. signing from Chelsea. No, as, as we've heard from our old Trafford correspondent here, that's uh, one matter. Dave was not likely to get that wrong. Matter is the answer. One matter. Yes, Dave was not likely to get that wrong. Being a massive Man U fan, one matter is the answer. Over to you. Which instrument did Dave Navarro play in the band's Jane's Addiction and the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Is it drums, guitar? Or saxophone? I haven't got the first idea, have you? I, I haven't, no, but I don't think it'd be a saxophone. No, no, right? same with me. I don't, if it's a, is it? They're heavy metal. Mm. Uh, so that's, I'd, I'd, I'd go with your drums or guitar. Yeah. Drums, I think, okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, go with it. Oh, we don't know. We sort of ruled out saxophone and we're going to go for drums. Drums is your answer. See if the eggheads know. Is it drums? I think so. It will be. No, you think so? No, it's not. It's guitar. Oh. Oh. Guitar. I got it wrong, so if you get this right, eggheads, you've taken the contest. The Welsh resort of Barmouth is on the shore of which body of water? Is that Carmarthen Bay, Carnarvon Bay, or Cardigan Bay? I thought it was Cardigan Bay. Yeah, I thought it was Carmarthen Bay is further south. Yeah. Yeah. Carnarvon Bay is, on the is further north, north. Right. Right. and Barmouth is on the south side of the yeah. Lane Peninsula, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it should well, be. That's way down, quite a way down, yeah. actually. Yeah, actually, it's actually it's 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 a bit further of the. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's Cardigan yeah. Bay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we believe that's Cardigan Bay. Cardigan Bay is your answer. If you are right, you have taken the contests. The answer is Cardigan Bay. We say congratulations, eh, kids? You have won. <laughs> Commiserations to our cross in quizzes. The A-Kids have done what comes naturally to them and they reign supreme over Quizland once again. So, well, just about, I should say, because you've had a few bents and scratches, haven't you, Eggs? Oh, yeah. No. But you're back on track. I'm afraid you won't be going home with the £1,000. The money rolls over to our next show. We say, A-Kids, congratulations. Sorry about, Judith, about the incident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Just shakes her head at me. Join us next time. I'll try and make up with her after this show to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat the eggheads. £2,000 says they don't. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>